Hi guys, before we get started, I want to let you know that I'm publishing a new book. It's called Ruck Me, and it's coming this autumn. If you liked What a Flanker, then you're going to love this. It will be available in hardback, ebook, and audiobook, read by yours truly, of course. If you want to get your hands on a signed copy, then head over to waterstones.com and pre order while stocks last. Thank you for all your support. Now back to your regular programming. Hi everyone, I'm Jace Haskell and welcome to What A Flanker, the podcast series two. My guests today are the biggest sellers of vegan cookbooks and are of course Sunday Times bestsellers. This powerful duo is famed for their tantalizing and easy to follow recipe videos and have racked up an incredible following on social media. Their most popular recipe video was viewed over 50 million times. It is of course Bosch, made up of Henry Firth and Ian Theesby. How are you lads? Now then James, thanks for having us, we're great. Yeah man, good to meet you. In these COVID times, right, because I can't be bothered with the drama, the reason the lads are sitting together is they're bubbled together. So don't waste my time in the comments section. <laughs> don't bother. Nobody cares. By the time it's come out, hopefully we're out of this, this mess. mess exactly. Yeah. So how are you? Are like, you right? Really good, man. Yeah. Well, like you said, we're bubbled. So we like we live and work in the same house. It's it's a fine house for us to live and work in because yeah. there's space. But at the same time, we're kind of in a cellar yeah. where we cook make videos for social media, everything's obviously vegan. Yeah. So it's quite weird to actually be out in the world right now. Yeah. I know I saw that you said you had your first espresso in about yeah, four man, months. I'm like wired. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, it's so nice because uh, we're, we're sat in this podcast studio, which is basically at the back of this bar. And it's just nice to be in a bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're not having a beer and there's no one else here, but it's just nice to be doing something other than just chilling at home. I cannot wait for the world to open up again and to be able to do things again. Yes. Yeah. We just feel like hermits right now. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big hugger. Like, I like social interaction. Yeah. And I think one of the interesting things that's going to happen is, you know, people are still going to work from home. I think some people will never go back to work. Agreed. I think one thing we're going to, it's going to really affect is humans like to be around each other. Even if you're really kind of isolated and, and a kind of a, an introvert, that social kind of hugging and dialogue, it's so awkward now because you don't know how people are going to react. Like, you know, you could do fist bump, do you hug? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't shaking yeah. the lad's hands. I, was, I mean, I was, admittedly, I was smashing through a breakfast before I, got, <laughs> yeah. before I got here. It is weird, though, isn't it? Because, like, before, your just average sort of standard greeting would be like, all right, mate, give him a shake. Yeah. And then it's like, you just have no idea. I think no. I've become a lot more socially awkward off the back of this lockdown. And I think probably a lot of people will. And it will take a little bit of time for us to sort of get back to some kind of relative normality when it comes to social interaction. Yeah, I mean, what I'm going to do is uh, I just walk, I go, someone puts it, I go, fuck that, I'm giving you a hug. Yeah, that's yeah. what I, I, yeah, I, I yeah, like. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to do what I do in most areas of my life: just balls through it just with like loud it. noises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, you know, a severe <laughs> spoonful of arrogance, just fall straight in. And then, but then, <laughs> I, the only thing I equated to is I got uh, I got a dog recently, um, and he's uh, he's well, he's about ten ten months old now, and obviously. A lot of delivery drivers don't like dogs for various reasons, but but Bertie's like the friendliest dog in the world. But what I do is I make him sit when I open the door, and the little fucker, if I don't if I don't <laughs> deal with it quickly, he shoots past me to say hello to him. And I've had like delivery drivers running up the drive, and I'm like running after him. It's fine, it's he's, fine. He's he's, fr he's friendly, and they're like, oh okay. Or I have to like pick him up, and he can't understand it because all he wants to do is like sniff him. It's a bit like me meeting people. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm sprinting <laughs> along. Going, all I want to do is hug you. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Um, so how has lockdown been for? You. Has it been, uh, because context, as we were talking about off air, is the key. Has it been, you know, the kind of emotional nightmare that's been for some people, or has it been a, a, a path of creativity, or has it been, you know, cigars and and you know, sitting in the <laughs> vegan cigar? Because kind of cigar, I assume cigars would be vegan, really. I, I don't, 100% no, I tobacco. don't think oh, so it? because they would be tested on animals. Oh yes, a cigar no. tested on animal, animal. I reckon they would do. Yeah, it's not every definitely. cigar though. Not every single one, no, but just can, the company. I mean, because I want to get into all this. Can. Yeah. If a cigar was once tested on animals to see, does cigars kill animals? But that was, say, like 100 years ago, but they're not tested on now. Can we go? I think technically that would not be vegan mm -hmm. in, in right. the strictest possible world. But at the same time, I don't think you would be chastised no. for smoking a cigar. But I just don't like them. No, I know. People yeah. are doing it at weddings. And I'm like, OK, well, yeah, have a bit. I don't like it. No, I, see, I got into it. I, I've Did always, you? yeah, so I always been... I have not, not a lot of vices when I was playing um, yeah, and, you know, I kind of had to be really, you know, super fresh. Always got drug tested. Um, you know, alcohol, I just shit the next day after drinking. Yeah. And I, I, once a year I would have a cigar. And then I watched um, uh, The Last Dance. Yeah, the Michael Jordan documentary. Right? And I was like, so if cool. Michael Jordan 
yeah. can drive <laughs> to a game for the Bulls just and have an unbelievable out. Cuban while relaxing. I was like, it is good for me. So during lockdown, when I was actually writing what, what a flanker, I just sit in the garden. I love a cigar. Um, obviously, at the right times, always after a meal. Because what those people do at weddings is they get shit-faced, yeah. they have a cigar, three puffs in, they go green. And, it, and A, it makes your hangover <laughs> ten times worse, and you're always going to chunder. Yeah. I'm like... Relax. If I take a dog for a walk in the evening, that's when my that's nice. my time. But nice. I didn't realise I was being anti-vegan with the cigars. But I'm going to say, find me a video of when it was tested on an animal, please. Well, I don't do that. But that, that's you know that's my. I didn't know that was a thing. If it's I always been yeah. bad dreadful, isn't it? If you think about it, those poor animals just being like, what do they call it? A blowback. Yeah, just that's like it. with a cigar, just, oh, just blown pumping into it in. Really? Sad. Yeah. There's some pretty um, horrible videos online about that. There's one I've got in my mind right now of like a monkey who's it's not a cigar, it's a cigarette, but basically like just a sort of just because they have to go through the motions and just to make sure that it ticks the boxes, you've strapped this monkey up and it's got this horrible thing over its face and then a, a cigarette is just being lit and it's just being pumped into its mouth. And then I just kind of think like, yeah, you, uh, you know. Who does why? that? Yeah, but why? I can't why believe we've need... got into this within about three minutes. I know. <laughs> I, know but I, I now, now know why. Stuff, I now, yeah. I'm interested to get the vegan. But sh- uh, sorry, I spoke over you guys. So as, how has it been? Creative or relaxing? I think we've been creative. Um, you know, we've been, mm-hmm. we make videos on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube from our kitchen so it hasn't really changed that much we had an office with our team kathy and charlie where we would get together three or four days a week and we'd all work and edit videos Mm -hmm. now we don't do that so we got rid of the office so now everything is at home our team are all remote so we spend a lot of time chatting to them on videos i guess it's been quite productive Mm. for us because we could still make those videos without the commute but at the same time man we just it feels very samey. Mm-hmm. It feels like we've spent a year just locked in where normally we'd be traveling the world, going to LA, doing book tours. We'd probably be in Australia right now mm. if we weren't locked up. So so we feel the pain. Yeah. Uh, like, I suppose just everyone has felt the pain. But I mean, like you wrote your book over the course of lockdown. We started our fifth book, Speedy, at the beginning of lockdown. So like Henry says, it was a really fantastic time for creativity. But I think, yeah, we really miss like sort of being out on the road and like doing things just doing normal stuff i know man <laughs> going to restaurants you know yeah. and getting like inspiration for recipes at various restaurants that you have in london and various other places and uh yeah it's been it's been weird yeah and actually it's, it's put an end to our living together so um this isn't public knowledge yet mm-hmm. but um we're both moving out so we've been in the same house for like about this is exclusive, yeah, this yeah. Is exclusive God, literally. we've been in the not same quite house the same as one direction breaking up i'm not gonna lie to you. like i don't want to i want to hype this up but i you know yeah. i think it's, on the give a shit scale i think this is probably sitting around a four but i am excited to say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i didn't know there was a scale there is that. a scale for that like okay. for, for, for young teenage girls one direction breaking up take that that was a big thing. Yeah. Or Bosch. Daft, Daft Punk. They've now, Daft Punk. Yeah, that's a 10, yeah. isn't it? That, well, that was a, well, for some people, yeah. that was a 10. But yeah, for me, that's a 10. That yeah. was a 10, yeah. But also because they're just so cool. Just, yeah. I mean, I, did one of you just walk off and this is a blow up? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> that, I don't know which one, though. No. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're moving out of the house that we've been renting for a while. And we're both getting our own places. Henry's moving into the Cotswolds. Yeah. I'm moving into West London. So, yeah. How, how is that going to work? With uh, just virtual and... Yes. Yeah. Well, not virtual, actually. We'll still get together. So we're an hour away from each other. Okay. And our team is remote. So we'll just be able to kind of meet in the middle. I'll be at Ian's. Yeah. He'll be at mine. My kitchen's going to be quite nice for filming. Yeah. Ian's will be good for London. Mm-hmm. So we'll just <laughs> good for it. London. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, get, Ian. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how shit's your house in London? <laughs> yeah. no, it's good. It's yeah. nice. It's a nice yeah. spot. It's small, but um, like really, really nice. Yeah, man. So it's cool. Did you, when you, do you get, obviously you got a veritable mansion out in the Cotswolds because of the size? I mean, I don't know about a mansion, but um, it's definitely more than I could get in That's London, what I mean. You know so, what I mean? so do you, are you going to sit there going, oh, it's so sweet. You're London, and you're like, well, yes, it's location, mate. I'm not in the Cotswolds. And you're like back there going, I've got my yeah. expansive kitchen. Yeah. yeah. You're going to have an Arga and all that nonsense? Probably all yeah, that stuff. I love yeah, I love it. <laughs> need to. What, um, what, why? Just because you both got sick of each other and going, you know. I think well, Henry and I have been known each other since we were like kids, like since we were 11 years old. And uh, we've been living together for eight years. Um, oh, wow. And in those eight years, well, obviously we set up Bosch. That was five years ago. Um, in fact, it's the fifth birthday this year. <clears throat> um, and Henry's obviously met his lovely fiance, and they've sort of the next stage of life leads for them. And uh, I'm just not ready to leave London just yet. Fine. So it's kind of it's good. It's yeah. Oh, so you're the th- you're the third wheel. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, so at what at what point? Obviously, your fiance, you you move in, you're both sitting on the sofa, and you're like budge up, budge up, trying to get between yeah. them. And they're like, no, can you? No, can you? you we'll have yeah. a movie night. Can oh you just- God. So, in we are going to be having a quiet night in. You're like, oh, sweet, I brought the popcorn. You're like, <laughs> yeah, no, Ian, no. we're going to do it. No, no, that's what I said. We're going to do it. You've forgotten, like, that you're not part of the team anymore. You're like, 
Rodney to his Dell or Dell to his Rodney. I'm a little bit like that, yeah, I suppose. So, yeah, I think it, um, a few too many of those instances made me think, yeah, maybe we need to move out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like that. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. It's all Bosch, coming out now. Bosch are going to fully break up now. I love this. That's not why I set up to do, but um, yeah. okay, well, congratulations both. You're getting yeah. your house out London. That's amazing. It's going to be cool. How was living together? Was it, was it, you know, was it, was it fun? Was it with a few adventures? Is it going to be like a sad moment where you're both in your separate beds? Because you, I mean, you go, Night, Henry. Night, Ian. Is it like? Is it a bit like that, or will you be like night? Oh, no. and your missus will be like that. Yeah, you'll be like yeah. just like e- echoing round. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Echoing round. Your, no, yours will be echoing round. Yours will be like hello. Just bounce off the one bit of plasterboard. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, gonna, it's gonna be different, it's isn't it? Be different. It'll be different because um, it, we've also we had our housemate Darren as well. So there was a fourth wheel. There's a fourth wheel. There was a there fourth was. wheel. Yeah, and then please was... say Darren's not a vegan. <laughs> he, he was is. actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. I trainer. would imagine that. Uh, I just the stress of going. Go, so what's for dinner, guys? <clears throat> well, we're having this, and you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It, well, he actually turned vegan shortly after he moved in, didn't yeah. he? Um, there were some moments when he was cooking eggs, but that only lasted about a month, and then yeah. he decided to go vegan. We didn't pressure him at all. No. He yeah. decided. You just removed anything yeah. that was like non-vegan yeah. from the house. Yeah. To the point where he was in the garden, with the gas stove, trying to make bacon. Yeah, we were just <laughs> hiding his eggs so he couldn't find them. Yeah. And then um, we had a previous housemate, Anna, who was a friend. We had a previous housemate, which was Alex. He was a mate as well. So we've like had fun environment right. living with mates in London so it'll be sad to like move out of that and obviously our work will be harder mm-hmm. because we won't be together but at the same time it's probably going to be a nice lease of life for yeah. both of us do you know what I mean yeah and we've proven that we, we can work remotely because we've worked remotely with the rest of our team so yeah. yeah we can like we can just both be doing work in our respective places or like in a sort of co-working space in London or like just down the road for where, where you are um, also, so yeah it's going to be fine the kitchen that we're moving yeah. to right so the kitchen in my new place like you said yeah. it's out in the countryside yeah. so we can afford it it's just a nice big light kitchen and at the moment if you see our videos on youtube you'll see it's just kind of dark, dark and, and moody mm. so we yeah. have to have some daylight so you go from oh. edgy, edgy vegans to kind of like light, light airy vegans exactly. yeah that's yeah. it have you got a spare room for it yes amazing yes okay. sofa bed i'll be there oh, quite regularly sofa bed you don't even qualify for an actual room we'll have to bring him a sofa bed i'll yeah. bring a lilo up be right <laughs> oh, I'll have a, can i sleep in your room again like you yeah <laughs> i don't know why up. i make it out to like the waltons like bob not little bob um so to tell me so the reason i wanted to get you guys on a, obviously, you're both incredibly successful, really well known. I'm fascinated by uh, nutrition and health and different things. And I-, I take the piss out of a lot of people for a lot of things all the time. It's kind of my thing. I like pulling like grenades and just running away and watching them explode. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, vegans, unfortunately, have not escaped my kind of yep. humour, um, <laughs> merely because I get such good reaction. And because, especially when it comes to diet and nutrition, it's almost like politics now, religion and nutrition are like the three sp- things that spark everyone off. Yeah. So I thought, why not get the best vegans in <laughs> to talk about it? So how how did this all start? Like, talk, talk me right back from the beginning when you were sort of 11-year-old. 11 11, 11 year old. Were you meat eaters? Were you always vegan? Um, or, well, meat eaters up until uh, the 1st of March 2016, so six years ago. But my, my um, grandfather was a farmer, and we both grew up in Sheffield in Yorkshire, so we both had a very, like, normal existence like it was like meat and two veg every every evening sort of thing um but then at the back end of 2014 i was kind of like looking at myself in the mirror i was like oh, i'm carrying... Didn't you say 2016 just then i can't remember no the oh, i can't remember it anyway six years six years ago it's like, like, gra- it like a little gravestone in the garden where you both just go and like lay some flowers onto the day yeah. that the eating yeah, there is, yeah. <laughs> i remember it, like looking in the mirror and being like right i'm carrying my skin's a little bit too gray i'm losing my hair I'm carrying a bit too much weight I'm really i'm drinking too much booze and just not feeling in, in a very inspiring place so i was like right i need to change something up so i started uh doing uh like just trial vegetarianism to see if it would have any marked effects on the way that i felt and so also to sort of as a personal challenge to see how it went found it really difficult started reading about um vegetarianism because i wanted to see the full month through and by the end of that month i'd read so much about vegetarianism watched some videos one of which cowspiracy which is a really interesting video that you definitely should watch um yeah i thought i'm gonna give this vegan thing a whirl and henry and i were living it together at the time and i was like cooking food and he was like oh what's that it's like oh it's a nice curry it's like it doesn't look that nice <laughs> so he was like taking the mick out of me like standard um but like one thing led to another. We both watched that movie together and then Henry went vegan maybe a couple of weeks after. Yeah, the, the funny story about that um, that curry that Ian made. I, yeah. There was one particular moment when we were living in this two-bedroom flat, which, you know, this is a long time ago. So we've mm-hmm. been living together for ages. And Ian was cooking this brown curry and I had a freezer full of super high welfare meat. Mm-hmm. Like our mate Josh had just driven onto a farm and just bought all the meat direct from the farmer. 
that was all in my freezer and I was with a personal trainer. He had me on the kind of ketogenic kind of diet. So I was eating a load of meat and it was, you know, really good meat. Mm -hmm. So I was, I would just remember thinking those curries were absolutely ridiculous yeah. and that Ian's new fad was stupid basically. But then we watched Cowspiracy and the thing is at the time I was big into um, the environment. I've always been big on like trying to reduce climate change, annoyed at politicians and how little they were doing like six or seven years ago to reduce climate change. Loved Elon Musk, big Elon Musk fanboy. And also like I'd been running a startup before we'd been working together mm -hmm. in that startup and it was kind of coming to a close. I was looking for the next thing to do and thinking, you know, surely it's got to be something that's going to make the world better. Like climate change is a thing I want to actively try to reduce. How can I do that with like my working life? Mm -hmm. And then Ian showed me the Cowspiracy movie on a big projector. And the realization then was just, you know, what we eat has a huge impact on our personal carbon footprint. Animal agriculture at scale is a bad thing for the planet, you know, whether it's um, the amount of land that it takes to graze cattle or whether it's the amount of uh, greenhouse gas that the cattle will give off, mm -hmm. the amount of water use, water waste, all of this stuff. So many things that animal ag, mass animal agriculture is doing to damage the planet. And after re watching that movie, I realized, oh my God, I've got to do it. Mm -hmm. So I did it overnight as well. Yeah. Found it really quite easy, but also quite difficult to find stuff to eat in the world, mm -hmm. Pret had nothing. You know, yeah. there, there was there was no food you yeah. could buy. Out. Eight nine years ago, there wasn't. There was, there was nothing. nothing. Veganism nothing. was not. I I exactly. you know what, I don't think I'd ever heard of veganism. I remember I heard of fruitarians. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. I thought that, and then um, pescatarians, mm -hmm. vegetarians, veganism. Like veganism exactly. Ten years ago, I don't know what yeah. you're talking about. It was just a fringe group of kind of fanatics. Yes. The way everybody portrayed it, but actually, those people, as we now know, were mm -hmm. doing great things. So um, so yeah, felt fantastic. We both felt fantastic, yeah. and I think after that moment. We both decided we wanted to make that our the thing we did with our lives. But wait a minute, so, so you watch Cowspiracy, right? Yeah. And it's just an like amazing title. So I read Fast Food Nation. You ever read oh, that? Yes, like, yes, yes. But the weird thing is, and this is I I find it so amazing about human behaviour, is that out of sight, out of mind with so much of this stuff that if you don't see it, so you talk, we talked about, you know, animal testing, right? For yes. example. If people actually were aware made aware of like all the stuff that goes on, but you know, even things like um I always find it funny, you know, when, you know, when it's, there's always this kind of, I have to be how I carefully put this, but people get very upset about animal cruelty, right? Mm -hmm. Then you think about all the cruelty that's actually happening to humans and you always, you know, you always see this kind of stuff and people, because we have animals in our home, we sort of, that's more exciting than sometimes looking at our own, our own people. Yeah. And my wife gets very upset because she was always like, look, animal welfare is really important. But there's plenty of children and terrible things going on in the world. But because we don't see it, mm. we just carry on and don't uh, out of mind. It's the same thing with animals, you know, testing on stuff, the way they're tortured, you know, mass farming. If someone actually saw what a chicken breast looked like or what, what you know, mass, um, what they call it, bat uh, battery farmed stuff. Yeah, factory, stuff, farming. factory, yeah, factory yeah, yeah. farming. And you actually saw what a chicken looked like it was factory farming. It doesn't even look like a chicken. It's like some horrible alien version thing. Yes. But you, because you don't see it on a day to basis, you go to the supermarket. If you're on a budget, you buy that 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 cheap stuff. So I'm I'm fully aware of that. Yeah. So you saw that cowspiracy thing and were like, "This is blowing my mind." You were trying to be, be a vegetarian. Yeah. Were you not a bit like, "Hold a minute, fuck you, Henry"? I was finding a vegetarian <laughs> hard enough. Why have you thrown veganism into the mix? Like you went like nuclear. You were you were like on guns. Yeah. He went straight to <laughs> nuclear. Well, that's it. well. Um, You'd already gone there though, hadn't yeah, you? Yeah, I'd sort of like dip my t toe into veganism and it actually I was feeling a lot better like the weight had dropped off me my I, my skin had got f like clearer my skin it, like just looked better like it, I'd lost this greyness and I felt like a way more energetic so I was like oh I might as well just carry this on like this experiment like just just make this become a thing and then um after a sort of like about nine months a year of doing it we were both sort of thinking to ourselves well, well you know we we feel great and you can see that there's like there's if you just type in like in the Google trends, um, the word vegan is just getting more and more popular. It's it, there's definitely something here. Yeah. And then at some point there was um there was a uh, company called Tasty that was on Facebook. They were doing these top down recipe videos, and most of it was like cheese and meat and various other bits and bobs. And we thought, well, that's a really good idea of just showing people how to make really tasty recipes via the medium of social media on video, like. Why don't we just do that for veganism? And yeah. then one thing led to another and Bosch was born. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the backstory that you missed there, by the yeah. way, was that we had about six or 12 months where we were both off yeah, looking yeah, up our own things. thing that we could do in the space. So Ian had gone back to Sheffield, where we're from, and he was thinking about setting up a vegan cafe in mm -hmm. Sheffield. 
and I was in London doing various bits and bobs with the previous startup to just wrap that up, but also thinking maybe I could do a vegan ready meal business, like where we deliver people ready meals. So Ian was mm -hmm. working on that, I was working on this, and then we both decided, you know what, none of these feel right, but there's this new thing we could do here, which would be to create this video channel. It's got all of our skills. We know how to cook. We love to cook. Mm -hmm. We know how to make videos. We know how to do stuff on the internet. So let's build a video yeah. channel. And that's when we kicked the whole thing off. I'm fascinated that some what one video sparked such an intensity because right. you know i've seen like i said to you like i read fast food nation yeah and i was like oh god i can't believe that they do that yeah Three months later when i had a mcdonald's again or whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah, other yeah, brands yeah. are available whatever and i was like this is terrible like we do this stuff but you just as i said the out of sight out of mind thing because i think i'm probably as a sportsman and, and someone as an individual i'm quite inherently selfish you kind of sort of worry about yourself mm -hmm. and I, I always try to help other people but i'd never i'm always focused on doing but for you guys to have such a profound effect and then go yeah. i'm going to make a business out of it mm -hmm. um i'm a bit worried i might watch you know yeah, what's yeah, yeah. Cow, it called cowspiracy, cow'spiracy. if i watch cowspiracy yeah. i might never eat meat again it's well, mad isn't it i've not really thought weird. about it that way yeah. but i guess it, it was definitely a moment in time for me yeah mm -hmm. you'd already decided but yeah. it helped you firm it up yeah but it, it changed everything how, yeah. how hard look so you obviously said you struggled initially but you, you so a lot of times when people when it's, it's, for example when people train in the gym yes if they get over the initial hump of this is hell and they start seeing results it becomes addictive and they stick to it so for you it was the fact that you saw your skin getting better i mean you said earlier that you were losing your hair I'm losing my hair. Are you telling me that the fucking hair is going back with veganism? Because if it is, yeah. you're going to get a number one recruit from veganism uh, right here. <laughs> or I think it, what, what, the difference is it's not so much like um, your hair just gets thicker. It's not that, like I was um, experiencing male pattern baldness. It was more that my hair just wasn't as thick as it used to be. Oh, fine. And then like once you start eating, because I mean, your mum always told you to eat yeah. your veg, yeah. eat your greens. And like when you're eating vegan food, you're just eating an abundance of vegetables. Yeah. And I think that is only going to be a good thing. Right. And I, I, I just felt it saw it it looked amazing and i was like okay man just keep on doing this and it's been the best thing ever and i think we were way ahead of the curve in, in many respects because obviously we put our channel out there and when we did put our channel out there like you would walk into tesco or wherever and you'd be in a big supermarket and there'd be like one vegan milk and it'd be soy milk and there might mm. be one like takeaway sandwich and it'd be hummus wrap now you walk into a supermarket like five years later and it's just there, oh, you've like, got your own whole aisle. Yeah, well, yeah. it's not it's like it's not the stuff that we've got in supermarkets, but it's just like there's a massive choice. It's been yeah. a complete shift change in the way that people think about vegan food, and it's really been really amazing to see. So you found that because you got the results. How did you find it then initially? Because you, you did it overnight, and I know yeah. people always say that if you embark on a challenge with your mate, you're mm -hmm. much more likely to succeed. Yeah. Because mm. when you go. I really want to eat a bacon yeah, sandwich, true. and you go, "No, we're doing this." Mm -hmm. That's how people succeed. You know, it, same thing with people with gym programs. You know, if your if your wife is into losing weight and the husband does it, you're as a team, you're much more likely to do it. If you're walking into the house tired and your husband's eating a pizza and you're trying to eat a salad or doing mm. something, you know, kind of low calorie, it's mu you're much more likely to fail. Mm -hmm. So you had your mate holding your hand. Yes, but it must have been hard. Yeah, I guess. I guess what was hard, right, was, and I specifically remember walking around St. James's Park. Mm -hmm. I was hungry. I was looking for something to eat and there was nothing. Yeah. I went to the prep there. I mean, you know, other other places to eat are available. Yeah. But <laughs> Unless was, they're sponsoring, yeah. then we'll, uh, we'll take it. I was looking for a wrap and I knew they did a falafel wrap, but it wasn't there. So there was nothing I could eat. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to eat anything. But I think like counteracting that hardness of finding food when out was the fact that I felt my digestive system uh, was having an easier time. I felt a little bit lighter. Mm. I felt like there was less kind of strain on my body from my overall digestive system. I probably did lose weight. And the weirdest thing actually was, because I've always been quite a big sufferer of hay fever. Okay. My hay fever went from like a kind of seven out of 10 at peak time to maybe a, a two out of 10 mm. at peak time. Oh, wow. So it hadn't gone completely, you know, and every now and again, I'll still get a little bit sniffly right now. Yeah but it made a huge decrease in the amount of kind of my allergies. So I don't know if that was dairy, you know, we're not nutritionists no. and like everybody should do their own research. But like what we found was it was better for Ian. It was better for me. And it kind of made the difficulty worthwhile. Yeah. That's, um, I'm fascinated by this whole thing. I keep saying fascinated, but I don't know every yeah. podcast. Every good time word. I interview people I'm interested in, yeah. I go, oh, I'm fascinated. It must be a good podcast. <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good people. I, I don't know why. I don't know why I keep doing it. Um, is there anything you particularly missed? Because you know that I, I, there's all those stereotypes of like I think it was out of friends or whatever when you know Phoebe's like a vegetarian or does something and like she's like oh no I eat bacon 
Yeah. And it's like, well, you can't be because you know that 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 taste of a bacon sandwich. Was there anything in particular that you guys just were like, oh my god, this is so hard, and I like, have to leave the room when someone else is eating it? Um, yeah, I mean, like the first thing that I used to meet, uh, miss was my mum's brownies. They were amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, we obviously fixed that and made our own brownie recipe, which is pretty good. Um, but I think the thing that I missed the most was choice. Yeah. Like walking into a yeah. restaurant and feeling like the like that guy, you know, just being at the table and you walked. I remember walking into Meat Mission with a yeah, Alison yeah, Quaid. Yeah, yeah. Interesting choice. Yeah, 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 right? to a place it, called Meat yeah. Mission. It, it, it wasn't my choice, obviously, but we'd 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 gone there and I, I remember it like really well. And um, and everyone's like, oh, I was like, so it, this was about two months into the vegan thing, and I was like, oh, maybe I should just sack it off and get some ribs. Or maybe just get some chicken or whatever. And it's like, actually, no, I'm going to be stoic. I'm going to carry on. Uh, so I asked the guy, I was like, um, the, the server, I was like, oh, can I have a, a salad? He's like, yeah, sure. Uh, I was like, you're going to have to hold the cheese. You're going to have to <laughs> hold the croutons that have been cut in butter. And you're going to have to hold the ranch. And he was like, okay. Uh, and it came over and I did feel weird but at the same time that was like the first major hurdle where, where I was like okay I can get basically you walk into Meat Mission and you can make your own option if you can ask the the server to make something for you yeah. and they did do that eventually but I don't know it was um, yeah, that, that, the choice was the thing that I missed that sounds so challenging what yeah, about you? I, I would say so the things that I missed there were so many man I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love how <laughs> so he went with just yeah. brownies he was like brownies and choice yeah. you're like yeah. um Everything. <laughs> Everything, man. Fish and chips, right? I used to love fish and chips. Yeah. On the way home, when I'd had like a tough day at work, I'd be like, I'm just going to nip past the fish and chip shop. I still haven't found like convenient takeaway fish and chips that's near us yeah. that I can enjoy. But we do cook it ourselves sometimes, but it is a faff. So that was a big one. I used to cook steak all the time. So, you know, I missed that. But as Ian said, we do try and like counteract it by making our own ones. Yeah. And the nice thing about the choice thing is that like, these places like Meat Mission or, or wherever, they've all now got options. Yes. So it's great to see five years on that it's all started to increase. Um, I, so I, honestly, <laughs> it's amazing because when I think of all the things you can't eat or like the things, the rules. Oh, there's so many. It's like an, it's such an extensive rule. That's what that's what lost me. Like, because I thought to myself, do you know what? I can understand like uh, the mass market, agricultural stuff. I, I really agree. And this is my stance on it. So we're, so we're clear with stuff is. If you're vegan because of environmental purposes mm. for kind of like say it was religious mm -hmm. or um, kind of uh, what's the best way of saying it you know uh, you know uh, ethical reasons like you don't yeah. like animals I I'm 100 on, on, on board with it I think there's yeah, a really yeah. valid reason I don't think you can argue with kind of the, the, the mass farming thing I don't think you can argue with any of those things but it's interesting like why can't you eat fish just off yeah, the top yeah, of yeah. fish and chips like. Who's mugging? Who's torturing fish? Like, can't we not have fish? Fish is an animal. Oh man, the seas are in trouble. You know, I know they're in trouble. Without, without us delving into that rabbit hole, like, yeah. Um, I guess that health-wise, we can't think of a reason other than maybe mercury. Yeah. But like, as as we said, we're not in it for that. But overall, what we as a species are doing to the seas is really bad. And you know, they talk about the Amazon being the lungs of the planet, but actually, it's the ocean yes. which is the lungs yeah. of the planet. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's something like we've seen fifty percent decline yeah. in uh, biodiversity in the sea over the last something years. Yeah. And like you know, it's that's really bad. I agree. Listen, I agree because I think we're single-handedly destroying this plant beyond belief. I, I personally think we've we've you know we outside out of mind. There's too many people making noises about doing stuff. We don't do anything. Like you see all the yeah. I thought the skies, plastic bottle stuff. We're wrecking everything. Mm -hmm. Rover fishing everything. We don't really care because again we're just inherently selfish. Like everyone you know how can you say to a fisherman don't fish because he's got to make his money it's all such a complicated network i don't want to go down i just purely thought of it as like a food thing i was thinking to myself could i do this and i was like yeah i could do the f eating just eating fish yeah. love fish i was thinking of eggs but then i thought like you know mass farming chickens and stuff i can understand that environmentally that's difficult but things like when you said croutons cooked in butter i was mm -hmm. like oh <laughs> god but then you just cook them in oil yeah See, this is the thing it weirdly it isn't that hard mm. if you just buy different products yes. and the more things become available it becomes easier because there are decent enough yeah not perfect but there's good enough substitutes for everything and the more people buy those substitutes the more they'll be available the better they'll get and it becomes easier to do it and i think the net result of all of that is we as human species will be able to tone down our Fine. environmental footprint yeah. a bit and it's for us it's not about like turning the whole world vegan no we're not on that journey but we just want people to eat more sustainably and have a bit more of a think about yeah. The environmental footprint of what they're eating. I think that's. Yes. I think. I mean, look, I, I, I'm 100 percent on board with that. Yeah. 100. I don't. I don't disagree in any way, shape, or form. I think we have so much. I think from animal cruelty 
to cruelty to other humans to the way we're destroying the environment. All the things we talked about today are all of equal kind of um, importance. I mean, you've kind of actually nicely gone to the next question. So you're not aggressive vegans because I, again, obviously people like like if you look at extremism on everything mm. and it's the same thing with like meat eaters being just as um kind of full of those dogmatic as as vegans you seem to be quite friendly vegans because i remember someone <laughs> sent me and this is a tongue-in-cheek thing where this woman said um if you eat animals you should die wow. she's some she was like an aggressive american woman and i thought oh maybe she's doing a tongue-in-cheek and i looked at her like youtube yeah, yeah. stuff and a whole thing was basically if you eat that you should die do do I need to die, or are you guys? Because you seem kind of quite relaxed about it. But no, are you man, like the militant wing of the vegan army? Like you know, yeah. we are definitely relaxed about it, and Fine. like we've never been about the why. We've always been about like the how. Fine. So it's like if you have made your own decision that you want to like start eating more plants because you've watched documentary or you've thought deeply about like the process of factory farming and you want to start thinking about eating more plant-based food and need some recipes, you come to us and we can sort you out. But I mean, like the 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 people. That, like obviously we're kind of known in the vegan space now so we've kind of uh, built up relationships and friendships with the um sort of inverted commas like militant vegans and militant's a bad word it is great it? it's, it's a bad word you could also replace militant with passionate passionate is um, and principled because <laughs> you're so well media trained yeah. I love yeah. that no, no, it's, true. it's true. so good you're like, 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 we don't want to call them nutters we're going to call yeah. them um, just you know over exuberant uh, mm. fans of the thing yeah. Well, yeah. if you think about it right these guys are our mates yeah, yeah. And, and they're out there like flying the flag for yeah. what we believe in so we're really chuffed to bits that they're doing that yeah. it's just that we're not very good at doing that. And actually, we think there need to be some people in the middle who are cooking tasty food that meat eaters want to eat, yes. but that they can actually have a conversation with them. So we like we believe the same things that those guys believe, yeah. basically, which yeah. is the world needs to change. But we also think that there's a kind of middle of the road approach whereby it's not everyone going vegan. It's just more people eating more flexi. And and that, I think, is where we find a solution. Yes. But you do need people fighting on both sides, I guess. Like, you know, farmers in this country, like, they do a great job. Mm -hmm. Ian comes from a family of farmers. so yeah. uh, like, Well, you, you've obviously been cut out of the will, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, you uh, used to come from a family of, a family of farmers. I'll be honest with you, right? Like, when I, when I first uh, went vegan, I remember having a conversation with my mum saying, oh, I'm going to give trial vegetarianism. She was like, why would you want to do that? You, you won't be able to get enough protein, etc." And then when I said, I'm going to do veganism, she was, like, quite worried about my health and and a couple of months later, she was genuinely um, upset, like tears upset, because um, it like it was so far away from the way that I'd been raised. But uh, actually now, like, you know, a few years down the line, she's completely come around to the idea. And obviously, I think it's just like she's eating a lot more vegan food now and a lot more vegetarian food. They'll be more than happy to sort of drop me a text saying, oh, look, we've got a vegan meal from the supermarket, <laughs> this sort of thing, which is great. Oh, yeah, they got it. And they're like yeah. that. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> as long as yeah, they send, yeah. they want, you know, parents will do anything to bomb with their kids. Like, yeah, we're eating this vegan shit. Yeah. Right, get the steaks out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good though, man. Oh, so it's amazing though, but you did come from a farmer's background because. Mm -hmm. I sit in the middle and I've got friends of farmers, I've got yeah. friends of vegans. I mean, I sound like I've got lots of friends. I actually don't. I've already got two of each. <laughs> but, um, I've, you know, because obviously the, the veganism is the fastest growing um, nutritional trend. Yeah. And uh, vegan vegan cookbooks are the fastest growing thing. So I get farmers. I, so I've obviously done some work with some vegan brands. Mm. because My stance on it, to be very clear, because, you know, I, I, I sometimes uh, cheekily polarise. I don't mean to be. I think having much more, well, I think we talked about the environmental stuff, but having much more plant-based food in your diet, you know, uh, my, my priorities to anyone that I, I work with training-wise and myself is is high protein, high fiber, plant-based fibers, mm -hmm. and everything else like that. I have a wide variety of food. Like I would I would eat vegan food on the menu or add it as a side dish or do whatever because I, I want I like yeah. variety. I yeah. think I think uh, variety in your diet, color on your plate is so important for, mm -hmm. for you know micro and macronutrient um uh, kind of values, um, and I, I and I, but I've had farmers going, well, can you, you know, can you promote this thing because we, we yeah, everyone's yeah. gone vegan, yeah. and we, you know, we've got British British farming, and then I've got these other companies coming to it, and I sort of, if I if I like it because I have that ability to try both of them, I sort of put my thing in both camps, but it's, it must mm. be a very difficult thing because it's sort of polarizing because you're peaking talking about people's livelihood so i can understand what your mum was like yeah they were yeah they were a little bit um taken aback but like i say they came around to it and i think um yeah yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a gen it's an odd conversation to be having yeah and the about. big issue here right which we often it's kind of the question that will sometimes get thrown at us where we're like okay you've thought through that one really well that is a great question is the question about sustainability of food and you know what about like 
avocados or quinoa being flown in from like the Amazon yes, or yeah. Brazil mm -hmm. or wherever. Um, how can you compare that to a chicken, which I've got in my back backyard, mm. or a cow that's come from my local farm? And that's like, you know, that's, that's probably one of the hardest things to answer. Mm -hmm. But it does have an answer. Yeah. Right? It does have an answer. The first answer is that, like, local is always great. Wherever you're coming from, like, if you can eat more food locally, that's a wicked thing. Definitely do that. And, and we, we like to advocate that a bit. I mean, it's quite deep to go into that for us where we're quite like chilled out with our food but it's great if you can eat more local food but at the same time like the kind of carbon footprint that a cow produces mm -hmm. so if you imagine like all of the grains that, that cow eats all of the kind of um, water that that cow drinks all of that has such a massive impact that it far outweighs the impact of something being shipped over on a boat mm -hmm. um, in a massive batch with loads of other stuff coming across the ocean so it doesn't really it doesn't really tally up there's a wicked study on this if anyone does want to delve into it by a guy called joseph poor from oxford university who did the biggest study ever of like kind of global farming and food trends and environment environmental impact ultimately plants are still better from the planet even if the plants were shipped from the other side mm -hmm. but it doesn't negate the fact that we our british farmers do need to be able to grow more plant-based crops and i think there's a kind of learning that's needed there the government need to promote plant-based mm. foods in the uk more and we do need to like support those former farmers more because they are feeling themselves they're feeling a bit left out yeah. right now and they don't know what to do often and they're important people in society because they're some of the hardest working people you're going to mm. find My, yeah. like you you know up at the crack of dawn uh, going to bed when the sun's set and just working the fields for the whole time it's like yeah they're important people in society. we need to get a milk in the uh, milk in the almonds as the <laughs> vegan joke goes you know what i mean <laughs> talk to me how did bosch come about so i know why you've, veganism you've explained that um, you obviously overnight went went vegan and were like thinking business. You were thinking business, which is quite quite amazing. How did Bosch come about? So, um, God, it's such a long story, mm -hmm. but I guess in essence, we both had experience in digital and video. We said that already, and and we wanted to kind of create this cafe for the world. Yeah, we'd seen Buzzfeed's Tasty, and we'd seen they were making this new format of videos on Facebook that were like super engaging. Um, super engaging, super easy to follow. You know, the hands in pans yeah. where you just see the cooking yeah. like that. We were like, okay, that's a thing, isn't it? Uh, we met a guy called Jamie. He kind of showed us how to do them. He helped us like work out how to make these social videos good. And and we just started filming. Mm -hmm. So um, we started, What let, there was a first shoot that we did <laughs> where we basically, it was in our flat. It was on the hottest day of the year in 2016, didn't mm -hmm. you say? 2016, yeah. Hottest day of the year, so maybe July or so. No, was it May? Because uh, it came. No, the I first think... video came out in yeah, June. Yeah, end of May. End of May, right. So we, it's the hottest, hottest weekend of the year. We got two videographers. We hired them. We got. They brought a load of lights and a load of cameras, and we kind of erected all of this in our living room, made a film set, and filmed 20 videos over the course of three days. Yeah. We were working 16 hours one day. The next day we worked 23 hours. The next day we worked 27 hours, which yeah. doesn't make any sense because there's only 24 in a day. <laughs> um, we stank. We were drinking beer. We all hated each other by the end of yeah. it. But we got those videos filmed. And um, and actually the final video that we filmed, which was um, a watermelon Jaeger bomb, right? Wow. Whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. It is like you hollow out a big watermelon and then you get a smaller melon, hollow that out too. You blend up both of the melons. You put that into the pour that into the hollowed out melon, and then you put Jägermeister into the smaller melon and dunk it in like a Jäger bomb. Is alcohol vegan? Yep, yeah, some alcohol. Oh, right. like, most, most, most. Funny enough, how come, how have you, how's Jägermeister got through on the, I know, the radar? They, on that? They've got in, yeah. <laughs> I guess they don't test that on animals, do they? Yeah. So, um, so basically, we make that video. It's absolutely ridiculous. All the time we're filming it, Ian's going, "I'm not sure this is a good <laughs> idea. I think this is stupid." I'm like, "Trust me, this is a good idea." Yeah. So we filmed this video, and that was one of the first ones we put out, and it's it had 50 million views, and within yeah. you know within a matter of weeks. We had tens of thousands, then hundreds of thousands of likes on social media. Yeah. Our mate Jamie helped us. Um, we also had people like um, Peter, you know, the people for the yes, ethical... Yes, yeah, P-E-T-A. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 
and we had the animal outreach people, loads of big Facebook channels. They would share our videos. You won a Peter Award, didn't you? We did, yeah. Yeah, we got two uh, cookbook of the year for Bosch, and then I think it was the latest one that we've done as yeah. well. Yeah. Would you like to have done more research on that, lads? <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. like that. Absolute award so winners. Basically, yeah. the videos went viral, and then before long, we thought we should do a cookbook. People were asking us for cookbooks, and, and we did. Yeah, and that cookbook, the first one we did, uh, is now the biggest selling vegan cookbook of all time. Just like we've sold like over 650,000 copies of our books Connect. and uh, the, the the videos now have amassed like over two and a half billion views on social media wow it's, it, it has been a completely wild ride considering we're just two lads from Sheffield who um, like used to work in the digital space and then just saw this thing and jumped on it and it's been a wild ride but it's been amazing did did yeah. you think at the start, uh, and I always ask people, did you, did you figure out how you're going to monetize it or are you just doing it? Because a lot of people do stuff yeah. and they go, this is the best idea ever. I've got to share it with the world. And halfway through, you're like, shit, I can't. I've taken up my entire life. I can't make money out of it. It was tough, man. Yeah, right, it was. So, so right at the beginning, we were doing the thing they call bootstrapping. Right. In startup, which mm -hmm. means you've got no money. <laughs> so um, I, was, I was just working days somewhere else doing yeah. like consulting. Ian was doing all the, all the work at Bosch mm. um, and earning a very low salary, basically just about enough to survive. Yeah. And we didn't really have any money coming in. So for about the first year or two, maybe the first year, yeah, we actually made money by doing social media videos for other people yeah. to support Bosch. Amazing. So we were like, we knew how to do videos. So we were like, well, we'll do you a video for your channel just under your name. And that helped us survive for one year. Then the book deal came in. That helped to support us for the next couple of years. And then we started to work with brands yeah. um, and started to find other ways, other revenue streams as well. But um, we've kept our team super small, so okay. there's not a lot of us. It's still just me and Ian and yeah. Kathy and Charlie and Nat, who's our MD. So, so we've been lean. We never took investment. Um, and we've just tried to manage ourselves by working crazy hard, yeah. doing all of the work ourselves, and putting a good network of people like our publisher and our agent around us who are good at what they do, but aren't on our payroll per se. Fine, fine. Do you I know, know what you I mean? Know, yeah. So we kept ourselves lean. Was there any moment that you um, thought, uh, this is a nightmare, what the hell have we done? Every day. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, th I think, to be honest, yep. yeah, it, like, financially, yes, there was that. Uh, there was a lot of stress and a lot of work and a lot of uncertainty. You can't plan, like, when you're just sort of, yep. like, building in. You, you can plan, but you can't you can't rely upon the plan but i think like ultimately the the driving thing the back behind it all was the fact that like we really cared about the thing that we were trying to promote and which um, is the secret to anyone's success by the way if you're, yeah. if you're passionate about it people who go into stuff to make money yeah and aren't passionate always fail yeah, people I mean, who, who to... start to do something properly make money out of it by accident yeah. almost you have to like love what you do you have to be truly passionate about it. it's like with you i mean if you didn't love rugby you wouldn't mm. have made it internationally it's like if we didn't really truly believe that this is a really good thing we wouldn't have put the hours in and the work in and like worked all those weekends and worked into the night to sort of get to where we're at and, and like well we have no uh, intention of taking our foot off the gas anytime soon no. either because like you know this thing just doesn't stop we just keep on going and it's good i guess also like the, the the work that goes into it is um is sometimes not visible like it would be relatively easy to do a cookbook as a Com quotation celebrity chef where you just get sent a load of recipes from the publisher or mm. from a separate recipe developer and um, you haven't really thought that through but that just becomes your book mm. now like we sweat every single recipe to death like mm. we you know we spend months in our kitchen um, we won't put stuff out that isn't really really carefully written tested refined etc I mean we've we've cooked lasagnas one particular lasagna we must have cooked it 10 times yeah. and that's it that's one page in one book yeah, yeah. so that's the level of depth that we go to and i think that that work ethic and the fact that we are passionate about what we do does come out and it does make those books a much higher caliber and that's why people keep buying them but it does mean that every single day as i said before we're just like oh my god this is so much work <laughs> yeah yeah how did the first book deal come about did, did you approach them or they approach you well, what happened was, it's like like Henry said, we had built up this massive following on social media and we were very active in the comment section, very like um, reactive on the DMs. And we kept on reading this like, oh, you guys going to do a cookbook? And when you read that, like literally a thousand times, we thought to ourselves, we should probably think about doing a cookbook. So um, we we were initially thinking about working with this company called Unbound, where you can self-publish. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, but then we had a conversation with uh, a young Sarah. lady called Sarah, who was instrumental, actually, to the sort of the, the big thinking that we, we yeah. adopted right from the get-go. We've never said that. No, it's true. Good but, old Sarah. Yeah, good old Sarah. Big thinking Sarah. Yeah. yeah. She was like, listen, they they have, Unbound have reacted too positively. Like They're, they're a bit make, keen. They're very, very keen. I think we should go for a bigger publisher. Um, so what she did was sort of set about trying to find someone who would represent us as an, as an agent. We managed to land a wonderful agent who we're still friends with now, um, who managed to get us meetings with all of the major publishing houses. And out of all of, I think we had 10 meetings and eight of them bit. And then we were able to sort of pick the one that we wanted to go with. We went to HarperCollins and they have just been wonderful, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> so supportive. Oi, yeah. Unbelievable publishers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is that when you first, obviously the views were amazing. Is, mm. Was the book deal kind of thing when you f thought we've actually made it here? When you got your first sort of advance, you were like, actually, this could be something really sustainable. Yeah, man. Maybe, yeah. I think we, what was interesting was right early on, we wrote down on a piece of paper, well, a Google document, we wrote down our plans um, for Bosch and we wanted to build the, build the largest, like, vegan video channel on the internet mm -hmm. we wanted to publish the largest vegan cookbook we wanted to get the first vegan tv show in the uk and we wanted to get a range of products in supermarkets um actually now where we where we are 2021 to some degree we've achieved all of those <laughs> so it's amazing that you actually planned that we so did, many yeah. people don't do that it's so many, good to, uh, it's good to do that but though, it is right? but I, yeah. I so my bit one of my biggest regrets is i've, I've tried so many different things mm. and, and it, you know i always say, say to people when i talk about kind of business development because you know i had a supplement range i've had you know mm. uh, food things i've had you know i used to have my own coconut oil business all these kind of things that i've done yeah. and books mm. and health and fitness and gyms and stuff is the one thing that, that has always been missing is is kind of that forthright plan to actually yeah. go where do you want to be what verticals mm. you want to go into how do you make money because it's so easy in 2021 to do this yeah people who say oh, i can't i don't know how to start you can have a business in 30 seconds you can build a website for, for essentially free you can start selling essentially mm. for free yeah but without any, the biggest thing is actually not doing it and thinking about it. Exactly, right. so true. You can get paralysed by choice, though. That's yeah. the problem because you can um, constantly be searching for the next thing and having another idea and another idea. And the value in writing the stuff down is, and then sticking to it, is you can actually achieve it. Yes, absolutely. So I think when we when we got that first book deal, we were definitely chuffed to bits. Harbour Collins were great, and I think that was the first moment we were like. Ah, oh, maybe yeah. we can like at least survive now yeah. <laughs> without every day being getting the fear yeah. of are we going to run out of money? Are we just wasting our time filming videos in a dark room? Mm -hmm. um, and so that was when we we moved into a new place together, which had a bit of a studio, and we started we hired Kathy, and we got a bit of a team, um, and and I guess it enabled us to enter the next phase of the business. It's amazing. So, so the house that you moved into when you've been living together was that where you, you set up an internal studio in there to go and that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it was like basically it was actually uh, so the house was really nice. It, we had a big kitchen so we could do development for recipes down there. We could film the videos in there and we were saving ourselves on office rent in yeah. in London. So it's like we had me, you, Alex and MJ all living in this big like Victorian house in East London and um, and then we didn't we were filming everything in there so therefore we the business didn't take any office costs which was bloody amazing yeah yeah Mate, but, that's amazing yeah it's so good did you did you wait, wait so the big what was the biggest revenue driving out youtube stuff does that is that does that actually pay well for people or not really or i would say we've now got probably got three um the book is the book is helpful the right. book is really good and because we've got uh we've got two more books signed up yeah after this one is working right? on one right yeah, now so we've got that's one another exclusive video. speedy you said it was called no that's that's been out we're oh right new yeah. Yeah. the new one more is coming books out in the british library <laughs> right, okay. yeah we're coming is this gonna be the sixth one? this will be six yeah. yeah so so that definitely is really really helpful we also work with brands you know brands who make delicious vegan food that we like um we'll make cool videos where we can include their food in our products that brings in some money too and then the other one that's just started to um to kick off is we've got bosch food in supermarkets now because yeah. we really wanted to make stuff available for people so you can now buy something from bosch in every single major supermarket in the uk which yeah. is cool and there's more stuff coming so those are the three main drivers youtube actually and facebook don't do a lot for us no. compared to that oh really no. yeah i've always wondered about because youtube for me is the slowest kind of growing platform i have yeah. i love making content you know like, every, everybody now is a content creator but mm -hmm. i'm a huge show off and i Everything I like to do is we perform. We do a video together. I would love to that do a video cool, together. I'm, I'm trying to think what funny. I was actually while you were speaking, mm. I was thinking, how can I do a video with these guys about like I don't know, like a blind taste test or something funny to kind of you know like convert me to a vegan or, or totally make your that. best yes. version of the food and I'll come in. I'll, make, yeah, 
100. I would do it. I would 100 do that. Yeah. I'd love to do a burger taste test. Or yeah, something or like, like that. yeah, or like you're, you know, you're like the whole day is like you, you're trying to sell me your vegan. And like, right, come on, I'm open minded. Let's go. I want yeah, you to put yeah. your very best foot forward. Serenade me oh, into the vegan world. That's... We could do. We could do like fish and chips. We could do a burger. Yeah. We could pick like pick your favorite food. Yeah, and then we'll try and give you a yeah. taste test. And we could do like a. I could do a mini screening of, of uh, cow, uh, cow, cow spiracy. Cow spiracy. Oh, wow. Right, a segment of like what I've seen, what I think before it. What nice. I think after reaction it, video. then the reaction video, yeah. then the food. I'd be yeah, all amazing. over. As, and then as... we'll come to you, and then you can put us through our was a training yeah, session. Yeah, yeah. 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 Force feed your burger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that works your way. No. I come into your world. You can't come into my but world. You could uh, train us. Fine. You could just beat us. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd fine. be fun. I oh, also you're both DJs. We may tell you. Yeah, we'll do, that would be fun. We do a back to back. We can do a live DJ live stream. All over that. That's vegan, really good... vegan meat live stream. We're we're headlining this. Well, Russell Brand is headlining it. We come second on the bill. No, we're they keep saying we're headlining. Oh, what? We're co-headlining. Yeah, co-headlining. So basically, there's this festival that's happening, and it's actually happening, which is amazing. It's um it's called the Vegan Camp Out. There'll be sixteen and a half thousand people there and we're DJing for three and a half hours. Amazing. It's yeah, be so much fun. I love that. Oh, well I tell you what, let's do let's do a vegan live stream. Mm. Yeah. I'm in okay, for that. I'm in for it. that. Got... Well, are you live streaming now? Yes. Where do you do it? I at my house. I've got uh, I've got I've got I've got, I've got, I've got, I'm such a keen over the coast tech. I've yes. got four decks. Big mixer, Badass. got amazing um, uh, cameras and everything else. We got the so. new ones, the new CD decks. Yeah, I've got three thousand. We, we got those yeah, bad boys. Yeah. They're amazing. I'm, I, got, I actually got three thousand. We got off real off piece there, but and mm. the new um, the V10, you know, the Pioneer. We've got that one mate, too. So fucking mate, cool. All right, we'll do it. We can do so it. Much better. All right, you went to Tenerife. I went to Fourteen Reef. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna buy three more fucking decks. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, we've got them, lads. We've, you've got more than us. We've just got two. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. no, I finally beat the vegans. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should get two more and then we can go side by side. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what, what I would really do. What I get you guys to do is I come and you guys have two on one side yeah, and yeah, the other. Yeah, yeah. You've got six channels, so you can do it. But we'll do that. Where do you live? I live in Northampton, but I tell you what, if we spoke to... um. I tell you, if I spoke to Defected or something, they've got a studio in East mm. London, actually, or their new offices, oh, and they've got an amazing live stream spot. Nice. If I said, listen, guys, can we do a live stream thing from there? All It'd over be that. great for the vegan channel. Because you, I mean, I assume, you, I mean, how many followers you guys three, got? Three million. Three oh, million. stop yeah. it. I mean, yeah. look, <laughs> you, know, you beat me on that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. But they want us for food. They're, they're, the yeah, music yeah. is a secondary. Wow. Well, <laughs> they're now going to get music and food yes. at the same time. Um, tell me about the, na- the name Bosch. How, who came up with that? The name Bosch, right? The funny thing about the name Bosch is, I guess it came from like the phrase "bish bash Bosch," yep. which, if you look it up, it kind of means a thing done in three steps. That's kind of quite easy. Just Bosch it in there. Yeah. That was kind of where it came from. It felt foodie, but it has since evolved to mean um, boys of Sheffield. Yeah. Boys <laughs> of Sheffield, yeah. lads, yeah. love a branding head on that. Yeah, Who's exactly. come up with that? So, someone, um, a fan, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like a fan in the. It, it's like, does Bosch stand for Boys of Sheffield? It's like, well, it didn't, but it yeah, absolutely it does, does now. Yeah. And they they call it backronym, where you basically come up with an acronym later. Backronym, yeah. yeah so no, we, I'm someone learning so much. Did, us, yeah, <laughs> Did you? Has it blown you away about how quickly it's grown and how fast it's growing? Uh, yes, in a word, it has. I think we were, we we've obviously sort of been in it so we've kind of experienced it so it has it, it, it's felt kind of natural because we've been working for it. it have we been working for it no we've just been working working on it yeah on it in and it. it's just in, and everything that's come has been wonderful um but it, yeah it's i don't know what the best way to do you know what it? though for the last year we've not seen yeah. um any of the people that know us any of the fans we've not done our events but the previous year i mean you know we were yeah we about. dj to thousands of people we cooked on live tv in america we've done all the tv yeah. in the uk pretty much um so so i think the previous year yeah our minds were blown you know when we're meeting our heroes and and we had our own tv show right we had like literally an itv show the first vegan itv show with a crew of 15 people filmed over three weeks in a house like that all blew our brains. Yeah, I think we've probably we've just forgotten a little bit about that. Fine, since we've been locked in the cellar. But you'll re, but you'll re, <laughs> but it will reignite as soon as we're wait. out. Can't Fingers wait. Fingers crossed. Um, I've got two, three questions to finish with. So, what were your advice would you give to anybody if they were thinking about turning to a kind of a, a plant based food? Like, and what what tips would you give them to make that transition? So, first of all, I would say um, absolutely do it. You know, it's a great idea. Um, if you if you've got people around you that are doing it at the same time, that can be a really helpful thing. So maybe find a buddy who can go down that journey with you. It might be worth spending, you know, a few days planning. Yes. Don't overdo it, but like find a few cool YouTubers, buy a cookbook. What, a couple of guys called Bosch. A couple of guys called Bosch, yeah. <laughs> buy a Bosch book or any other book. There's loads of great yeah. books around. Um, but like find some recipes that you know are going to, that you know you fancy cooking mm-hmm. and then you can like find your staples. Um, it might be handy to just actually 
if you really want to go down that route to give your chocolate bars that aren't vegan in the cupboard, give them to a neighbor or something like that. Mm. So kind of clear out your cupboards and just set yourself on a path to avoid temptation. Same way you might do if you were trying to cut down on eating snacks like that. And so you've got those recipes ready to go. You've got no temptation in the house. You've got a buddy who's hopefully going to boost you along and then go into it. But also like give yourself a bit of leeway. If yeah. on like week one, you end up having a burger when you're out yeah. or you end up having a galaxy and then you find out it didn't have, it had milk in it. Like, don't kick yourself. Don't take that as a reason to just give it all up. Just keep going. Don't put it in the yeah. fuck it bucket is my wife. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I love how that, you know, oh, I accidentally ate a galaxy chocolate. I just didn't know it had vit milk in yeah, it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, you can, that, that old inner do our dialogue, you can lie to everyone else, but you can't lie to yourself. It's true. Oh, I wonder if this um, beef sandwich I'm eating has got any beef yeah. in yeah. it. Oh, you mean it wasn't vegan? No, it's not vegan. I like the self-taught. Like, yeah. yeah. But I think the principle, you're right. Yeah, don't, don't. and talking about principles, we actually uh, we have like five golden rules for when you have actually sort mm. of crossed the threshold and you are doing veganism, just sort of to remember. Uh, one of them is oh, just eat your greens. Just get as much green inside yourself as is humanly possible. Yeah. Uh, the second one is eat the rainbow. Yeah. So that's not eating Skittles. <laughs> it's like... Getting lots of colourful plant foods like, you know, peppers, you know, orange, red, get greens, get purples, as well as the greens. Get all of those colours into your body on a daily basis. Yeah, be, remember your nutrition. Like, do your reading. Uh, if you need some B12 pills or if you need a vegan spray, get it. It's not that difficult. Uh, the next one we say is like 80-20. We mentioned it before. So it's it's the Pareto principle. You want to go mostly healthy like the kind of eat your rainbow salads but then every now and again get a vegan takeaway it's fine yeah and last one it just mix up your plate like just make sure or like everything that you've got on your plate you've got your uh your protein you've got your sort of carbohydrate and then you've got like your leafy greens for your iron and stuff and like your that. fats and yeah try and make sure you've got a mix of all of that at every meal yeah. I, know, I know we've talked about um i'm going to come and do some some filming stuff with you but if you're going to uh, recommend one vegan recipe from your book that was going to convert me oh. Um, and, and, and as I said, what I loved about you guys in doing my research was the fact that you have made uh, people's perceived favourites and shown how you can make it in a simple, easy, accessible, tasty way. Yes. And that um, it's, you know, it's as if you were eating as you were before, but it's it's vegan. So what one recipe would you, you, you select for me? You can uh, both choose one if you want both one. Yes, let's do it. Uh, I would have to go the ultimate chili from our first book because it is like it, the the layers of flavour are, are really really good. It's got really fantastic texture. It's packed full of protein because it's got beans in there as well, and it goes great with guacamole and um, with nachos as well. So mm. yeah, the ultimate chili. Sounds so good. Yeah, man. I love that recipe. Mm -mm. My fiance MJ cooked that the other night. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, I would also recommend the full roast dinner, right? So, you know, a proper big hearty meal. You're a big guy, yeah. you know, you want to be satisfied. So we would cook you an absolutely banging roast. We'd make a mushroom wellington. It's kind of world famous for Bosch. Mm. Um, it's kind of pastry. It's got this incredible umami fill filling. Then we give you roasties that are done to perfection. We give you the most incredible red wine gravy. We'd even make you a vegan Yorkshire pudding. Well, I would love that meal. I'm in it. That, that, that sounds absolutely incredible. Um, oh, one question quickly: Could you could you date a non-vegan? I am. Yes, he is. <gasps> yeah. yeah. Why have we waited? Yeah. Like, we up for two hours. Like, we should have got into I was this just already. thinking when you said your fiance. I was thinking, right, shoot, you know, fiance does this thing, mate. It's right. Yeah. But I was thinking, could you? Uh, yeah, I, and I do. And, and how uh, the hell does that work? It, it actually works pretty well because, like, she's um, she she she's obviously chuffed to be cooked for because uh, that's one thing that I can do reasonably well is cook. Right. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of um, yeah, it, like I, I actually really like the fact that she's not vegan because she's her own person. Yes. And um, it, we didn't sort of meet because of the vegan split scene. Yeah. We just met independently. And uh, obviously, off the back of like dating me, she's eating a lot more vegan food, and she's kind of said like. I'm not into red meat anymore. And um, like, she's really cut down the amount of fish she's eating. I'm not telling her to do that. Fine. But she's just sort of seeing, like I've opened her eyes to a whole new sort of world of, of, of vegan cooking. And well, I like really the way she's, that she hasn't, like she hasn't, Folded. She's her own person. I think yeah. it's quite nice. It's the same way as I would never date a rugby fan. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just it's just like if yeah. someone if I would go on a like date a and someone girl. goes, "Oh my god, I really love rugby." I'm like, "Boop." Yeah, you're out. seeing you. I like uh, you know. I just because that's like red light. You don't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I love that you've done that. Yeah, because um, I just but w there's no tutting though. There's no like you're, you're like she's serving no. the thing up and you're like this. 
No, usually it's like, say, uh, I'll go around, I'll, I'll make a, um, a vegan spaghetti bolognese, and if there's some parmesan in the fridge, she'll pop it on. Ah, uh, like, right, fine, no fine. Worries. Okay. Yeah, good. Um, but yeah, she, she's great. Fine, okay. I, but she's... I would say I had the opposite experience when I dated a non-vegan. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> there, there was a bit of touching. Yeah. Like, yes! Well, yeah, it, it got to the point uh, once upon a time where I was just like... Oh, I remember. Like, you know, you're purposefully choosing to have a steak. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, I and love I'm that. a bit like, I don't mind that you aren't vegan, but like, it feels like you're doing this every time to prove a point. Yeah. Um, and, and that almost felt the other way. But then I met MJ. She was already vegan when I met right, her. Right, fine. I didn't convert her or fine. anything. Excellent. Um, but I didn't just... convert. I didn't. Yeah, I promise. <laughs> I didn't promise. But uh, <laughs> that worked out great. Yeah. But I, can I just say something? I just, I, obviously, I know the relationship probably ended for other reasons, but I love the fact <laughs> that she fucking was like, okay, I'm going to go out my way. Yes. To eat yeah, because partly, you, if yeah. you guys came to stay, like I would obviously, like I always like to accommodate, but part of me just to take the piss, because I would like. You bring would, chicken, you bring I, a box of chicken. Yeah, I would be like. <laughs> I would want a wa- medium, like a rare Wagyu steak that was yeah, slightly yeah, still yeah. breathing, like you know, even though yeah. Wagyu's like potentially treated nicely with massage, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd still be like that, just eat looking at it, just to <laughs> see because whether you guys like shuffling <laughs> off at the side, no, we'll be like, coming tapping. out in hives. <laughs> yeah. Oh mate, that's amazing. Look, I've, like, guys, I've I've so enjoyed talking to you. Quickly tell my listeners um, what books are out now uh, and what's coming next for you. Yeah. Amazing. So um, it's going to be our fifth birthday, yes. which we're really excited about. Um, we're going to be doing loads of cool videos on our YouTube channels where people can find us. YouTube, Facebook, website, or Bosch.tv and Instagram. Yes, absolutely. And uh, if you want a book with this five of them, the latest one is Speedy, which is just sort of quick. Speedy cooking. what? Speedy Bosch. Speedy baby. Bosch. Speedy, yeah, Speedy Bosch. Bosch. And, uh, Boys of Sheffield. Yeah, but yes. I mean, like, hey, you don't have to buy anything. Just come to join us on social media. We've right. put... F- like content on there every single day it's all free so yeah join and we do have another book coming which we're yeah. super excited about um are we allowed to say the name i think as yeah she's got thumbs up you've got yeah. thumbs up okay cool it's uh gonna, this will be an exclusive it's going to be called so bosch on a budget so you know we've been through lockdown it's yeah. the world where um you know the economic situation of the country is changing and people kind of have this misconception that vegan food has to be expensive yeah. it doesn't um and so we're going to show that in bosch on a budget yeah i think there's a misconception that, all, that trying to eat well is expensive Very across true. the board and, yeah. I, and i think I, I would have thought as well with veganism as well that might be an issue and a particular issue because if well back in the day limited range means that people mm. would put up prices but now everyone's made it affordable and you guys have stuff in supermarkets yes as well yeah all the supermarkets you can get like cake mixes burger mixes cakes we've actually just done this bad we should have brought you on uh, we've just done this thing with costa we've got this bosch slice in costa yes. which is oh my good it's super tasty. so amazing but do, do i look like the person that wouldn't have wanted a present why didn't yeah, we, we bring you have, one yeah. we should have brought... fuck lads i, know, I would have eaten form, it. it you're here all day right i am here all day we're, we're, gonna, gonna, get we're gonna get you on here yeah. before the end of the day yeah. Um, yeah. i don't know how but we're gonna make that happen but surely you've got you boys are so big time now you've got some sort of lackey now like yeah, you, you know I don't know about that it's probably <laughs> just, don't, we are our own don't lackeys. let the demeanour slip the guy I'm really accessible I'm like as soon as I get out of here yeah. get him a fucking slice will you like, we'll be shouting at some, someone's yeah, getting fired someone's today. getting fired <laughs> exactly. well listen lads I really enjoyed it uh, Henry Ian thanks so much for your time today boys you're absolutely brilliant guys it's been fun. please follow them on social media I've been James Haskell and I've been talking to Bosch boys of Sheffield today um, this is what a flank of the podcast series too if you want to subscribe please do it's a podcast and it's a YouTube show give me a follow on Instagram and don't forget to pick up a copy of what a flanker it's actually out in paperback when all this goes live can we take one of them with us that's there for you yes, yes. good luck.